Good morning ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to another video. If you're new, my name is Lee aka Riding Thunder and today we're going to be discussing essential skills that all riders need to know. So if that is interest to you and you'd like to know more, sit back, relax, grab yourself a cup of tea and without further ado, let us get in to the video. So ladies and gentlemen, how are we all doing? I hope you're doing well. And as the title of the video suggests, we are gonna be discussing some essential skills that most, if not all riders need to know or will need to know by the time they get on the road fully. First item on the agenda, we are going to be talking about spatial awareness. And what I mean by that is, it's very different to what it is in a car in the sense that where you're not in a cage, you need to have much, be much better spatial awareness. For example, coming up to these stationary cars you want to be looking around you not just what's dead in front of you but also what's to the left what's to the right and occasionally glance down into your mirrors to see what's behind you because you never know what might be coming up behind you could be an ambulance could be a police car could be a fire engine could be someone not going in a fucking straight line so with that in mind spatial awareness is very very high on the list of things that you do need to learn as a biker whether you're returning to the road after a long period away or whether you are literally brand new and just passed your CBT. Another thing that a lot of people don't really take into consideration is closing speeds. Now, it's all well and good thinking you've got the best brakes in the world and you've got the best engine braking and whatever else, best suspension on your bike and so on. But if you can't judge your closing distances, that in itself is going to cause you a hell of a lot of problems. Now for me, being a, not well I would say a veteran rider of 20 years, I think I've got a fairly decent idea of closing distances and how to gauge them for example these two idiots on the push bikes in front of me they're riding two abreast i'm approaching a speed bump at about 26 mile an hour i know what they're going to do they're going to sit two, two abreast at these lights so what i'm going to do is, is i'm going to back off a little bit and i'm going to sit here and wait for the lights to change and then i'm going to go around both of them giving them obviously adequate space so i don't in inverted commas scare them but if I'm honest, at the end of the day, the rules for cyclists in the UK are fucking stupid anyway, but that's just my opinion, so I won't go into that. Another thing that people need to be aware of is pedestrians. You need to be able to have eyes at the back of your head, out the side of your head. You need to be able to see everything and anything that's going on around you. For example, as I'm riding along this road, bearing in mind it's a road that I ride near enough every single day of the working week, there's always something to be aware of. Like there's a coffee shop right there full of people there's a couple there walking along with a buggy there's a guy waiting to turn right here which i'm ignoring or a lady in this case there's someone doing training over here there's two people jogging there's a gent out for his morning stroll there's a lady out for a walk you know there's people absolutely everywhere even at this time of the morning which is about half past nine on a sunday morning it's like you never know what's going to happen so you're always 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 need to keep your eyes up where you can because you never know what's going to happen for example one of these two they got back to me one of them could decide they want to run out in the road this little girl on that push bike might fall off this top of this boris bike might fall off this geyser who thinks is a power engine might fall off you know there's a lot of things to take into consideration this person driving this Vauxhall Astro in front of me is currently doing 12 mile an hour at a 20. Okay, fine, it's not breaking the speed limit or anything like that, I'm not saying that you should. However, if there's a speed limit, ideally you should stick to it. It's all well and good going one or two mile an hour under it, or even one or two mile an hour over it, which I won't condone because I've been caught out by that before. However, if you are going five six seven maybe eight mile an hour under the speed limit for whatever reason that has a knock-on effect to other road users around you i.e can cause people to end up having road rage which is something that i unfortunately am a victim of not all the time but sometimes it can be a bit you know <clears throat> get out of my way also traffic lights are another thing that people need to be aware of again it's part of the observation side of things you should always have your eyes up looking at the lights once you've got your bike or car into neutral you need to be looking around you assessing the situation ahead 
assessing the road conditions like for example that moped that's ahead of me turning right I don't know if he is going to turn right and he's just literally turned the indicator off so without looking ahead I wouldn't have noticed that and again all these little things that you can do to improve your skill set shall we say you can do on roads that you know you can do on roads you don't know you can even do it to sit on your bike at home for example on a sports bike you could get into that three quarter tuck position and you could crouch right down and see what you can see from behind the screen see what you can see from your peripheral vision and stuff like that you know it's every day is a every day is a school day when it comes to riding a motorbike I'm not going to profess to tell people what they can and can't do on a bike because at the end of the day it's on you what you do but for me personally there's always something to improve on you know your spatial awareness your vision your planning ahead choosing the right gear to be in like for example you'll find that I'll, I'll start short shifting when the traffic starts to build up because it's easier to chug along in seconds than it is to keep bouncing off the rev limiter in first and it's little things like that you pick up over the years little tricks little tips little yeah, little tips you know at the end of the day i can't tell you guys how to ride how not to ride whatever you do your thing i'll do mine but on a, on a personal level i'm just giving you guys stuff that i've learned over the years when you've got to get from a to b it's not always a race i mean it's never a race really i mean when you ride the long london streets like i do on a daily basis there's absolutely no point good morning there's absolutely no point in trying to race people everywhere at the end of the day what you want to do is ride at your own pace keep your eyes up keep your eyes on the road make sure you're aware of what's going on around you give yourself enough space should you end up getting to a situation where you've got to try and make you know a life-saving maneuver shall we say another thing you should always be aware of is people around you again this I don't know what's going on over here next to me but this geezer is getting way too animated for his own good you need to be aware of not just your surroundings but the people in those surroundings like this melon that's sitting next to me in this fucking high-vis vest he's just been dancing around like he's freezing his bollocks off you need to be aware aware not just aware of yourself but everyone around you for example this bus that's in front of me I took the opportunity to get out of the way whereas this on the moped behind me did not I'm not here to well I'm not trying to belittle people's riding ability or their skill sets I just want to offer people my personal advice stuff that I've learned over the years that may one day help you out Uh, that was probably a bit of a stupid thing for me to do but I did it to prove a point that again planning ahead looking ahead if you can see a gap that you think you can make as long as you don't you know pull out the maneuver halfway through it you'll be absolutely fine and that's another thing that a lot of people find on the roads that they suffer a lot of indecision indecision and changing your mind halfway through a maneuver can be so so dangerous admittedly I've had my fair share of accidents and I've had my fair share of close calls however I learned from them and that learning process meant that I look further and further ahead so I have a much better understanding of the road layout that's ahead of me what's going on in terms of traffic like for example this guy here that's indicating right at this junction I was able to roll off a little bit and put myself in a position where should I had to evade him because he changed his mind I had what they call an out this section of the road here I go down this road every day of the week near enough and there's always someone at the end of this bus lane that wants to turn left like this guy Amblam. and this is also another thing that you really shouldn't do now I'm not going to do it because I don't particularly want to get any points or a fine on my license. When you see a emergency services vehicle, i.e. an ambulance, if they've got blues and twos, 
you should not, and I repeat this, you should not tailgate. I'm keeping a, a healthy distance between me and the ambulance in front because it's probably going to turn right at the end of the road here and go to St George's Hospital which is one of the big hospitals in London if anyone didn't know as I suspected and he's got on the wrong side of the road or she you know we've got, we can't be sexist now can we it's little things like that being spatially aware looking ahead keeping your eyes up where you can I mean I know sometimes you will catch me looking down at my handlebars or sometimes looking down at my dash to double check my speed but as long as you've got at least a bike's length between you and the vehicle in front you can do that sort of thing I'm doing 20 mile an hour exactly on a 20 mile an hour road and there's a good gap in front of us and I'm able to have a look down at my dash now I don't recommend you look at your dash at every given opportunity because you don't need to sooner or later you'll learn what your bike feels like underneath you or your moped or your quad or your three-wheeler or whatever it is that you're riding you'll soon learn what it feels like underneath you to go at certain speeds and I learned that very very early when I was riding my 50cc moped back when I was 17 I could rag that ever-living shit out of it and not be doing more than 40, 40, 45 mile an hour or something like that but I learned to gauge my speed by feel through the seat now a lot of riders will say that they will use something called a butt dyno Alistair Fagan on 44 Teeth is also one of these people that famously uses that terminology and I have to agree with him that once you get past a certain age and a certain level of experience your butt dyno is absolutely worth keeping an ear out for if that makes any sense it's a very very underrated tool because okay you sit on your bum and that's literally what you're doing when you're riding a motorcycle however when riding a motorcycle it's not just your bum that gets the vibration through the seat it's the handlebars it's your hands it's your pegs it's your feet it's your thighs it's your knees you know you get a lot of vibration through the seat and you know the bars and whatever else on a motorcycle and obviously the more vibe the bike the more feedback you get so for example big v twins they vibrate your fillings out I know this because I have one four cylinders like my CP4R1 it vibrates but nowhere near as much as my Ducati does however it's another skill that people develop over the years of riding because then you don't need to look at your dash to see how fast you're going because you can kind of feel it another thing you need to be aware of is taking consideration the weather when it's dry like it is now, you can ride at a fairly comfortable, enthusiastic pace, shall we say. But when it's raining, that's a whole different game. When it's raining, you want to back it off by at least 20%. And if people want to go around you, then fine, let them go around you. But they can go around you the long way. Which is exactly what I was taught when I was riding, uh, well, when I was learning to ride 20 years ago. And that's how I've always been. If someone wants to go around me because they're getting impatient because, oh, it's raining, but I need to get from A to B, like a, an Uber Eats rider or whatever. So you do your thing, bruv. You do your thing, chicken wing. If you want to go past me, you can go past me. I really don't care. For example, just recently when we had quite a lot of rain, I was riding home from work to see the missus. And I was absolutely fucking surrounded by moped riders. Now, I don't just mean one or two. I'm talking like 10, 12 of these bikes. And they were delivery riders, Uber Eats, Just Eat, Go Puff, uh, and whatever other fucking delivery firms that they've got these days, because there's fucking hundreds of them. And I had these mopeds swarming around me like a fly around shit, literally. And it's like, come on now, leave me alone. But a lot of these moped riders that I come across, Especially when they see a big, you know... They see an R1 coming up behind them, like now, for example. They'll do one or two things. They'll either slow down and move out of the way, which is what I prefer, if I'm honest. Or... They'll sit in front of me and either block me in and slow me down 
Or they'll do the third thing, which really does fucking annoy me. They'll sit right up my ass and try and force me to go faster. Which I won't do. No, for example, just ride along now. Every so often I keep glancing down and I keep seeing a moped, either one car behind me or right up behind me. And I know this gaze is a delivery rider because it's got a whacking great big top box on the back of it. And I have no problem with this. I, I just want to point this out. It's not the actual vehicles I have a problem with, it's the people on them. In the sense that you'll get people who just pass their CBT, go and buy a massive top box to go and do deliveries, and then they wonder why they take people's fucking mirrors off. Because they don't know the size of their vehicle. They've got no spatial awareness. And that's one of the biggest thing that pisses me off about people that ride with top boxes. You've got absolutely no idea how big your, your scooter or your bike is. Do you know what I mean? It's, it, it's simple maths and it's simple geometry. If your top box is wider than your shoulders, you're not going to fit for a particular gap. And that's again something that I've always sort of lived by. When it comes to filtering, if the gap looks narrower than your shoulders, you should not attempt it. And that's not me trying to be defeatist or being a nervous rider or whatever. But if you look how wide your bike is, for example, look how wide my mirrors are. If I don't think my mirrors go through, I'm not attempting it. If I thought my mirror's in, then obviously the bike becomes a little bit, a little bit narrower. Not by a lot, but a little bit. If I think I can get through a particular gap, by folding my mirrors in, then I'll fold my mirrors in and I'll give it a go. But, if I get to a point where I think, Do you know what, I'm not gonna make it through that gap, I will literally back out of the maneuver and I will just sit in the traffic and I'll deal with it that way. Because I'm in absolutely no rush to get from A to B and end up getting hurt in the process. Like I've always said, and like my dear old mum used to say, it's better to get there late than not at all. You don't need to go mad anywhere. Okay, fine, I do suffer a little bit of road rage now and then where I think, you know what, I'm gonna absolutely wring the neck of the old one and get past all this traffic. That's one thing, but there's absolutely no need to go nuts just because you can. And things like that, filtering through to the front of a queue. Providing it's safe to do so, knock yourself out and do it. A lot of people get worried or nervous when it comes to filtering through to the head of a, a traffic queue. If you use your eyes and your brain and you scan the road ahead, no problem. You know, if you keep your eyes up, like I keep saying, if you look ahead of you, you'll have no problems. And it's not the end of the world if you get caught by traffic lights. You know, I'd rather get caught by traffic lights and have to stop rather than go hell for leather and try and get through a set of lights as they go from amber to red. Because that in itself is, gonna, is more dangerous than it's worth. Because, let's take this junction here for example. You've got traffic coming at you in three different directions. You've got traffic coming from the left. You've got traffic coming from the right. You've got traffic coming from in front of you. And all it takes is for one person to get a bit too heavy handed with their foot or their hand and jump the lights or whatever and that's it, your day's over, you're fucked. Because believe me, I've had more than my fair share of close calls with these sort of situations. And, uh, yeah, they don't always work out nice. I mean, some of the horror stories I could tell you about people that I've had to encounter while riding and make your teeth itch, it really would. But that's a story for another day. And that is where I'm going to leave story time for the moment, ladies and gents. So if you have enjoyed the video, please feel free to give it a like, uh, give it a comment, subscribe if you aren't already. And as always, ladies and gentlemen, you guys have been awesome. I have been Lee, aka Riding Thunder, saying look after yourselves, look after each other, stay safe on the road, be aware of COVID-19, be safe, be happy. Learn some decent skills out on your bikes if you can. If not, please feel free to refer to this video. And as always, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, adios.